Today, BTR fans, we are welding up a frame for someone else. Not that one, that's a BTR. This one. And look, it's got 3D printed parts. Snazzy. Dropouts there too. Stainless ones. The main tubes are just regular steel, so we'll get that lot tacked together. Get the chain stays tacked on and then get it out of the jig, which has already been set. Thank goodness. And then we can start back purging it, ready for some welding. What do you reckon, you excited? I'm pretty excited. It's the first time I've worked with some 3D printed stuff, so let's be having, yeah. All the tubes for this one already came pretty notched Customer, James, is gonna be taking care of all the bottle bosses as well, so we'll just need to stick it together and check the alignment. This video is sponsored by Miss Bent Summers. All of the tubes have been cleaned up. Acetone and deburred and cleaned out on the inside. Jig set, bottom brackets in, head tubes in, down tubes in, get there quick. It's just resting in. First thing we've got to do is get it tacked up. Just in there, one on the back of this, underneath the down tube there, one here, one on the other side, either side of the down tube. I'll set you on the side, get everything set up, turn the welder on. To make sure everything is proper clean for the TIG welding, you saw me cleaning up the tubes. You need to clean the filler rods as well. So, and heck that dirt. You want that off of there for your TIG welding. It'll just make everything flow and join together a hell of a lot nicer. Right, so, got the down tube and the seat tube tacked in. Just gonna chuck the top tube in now. So I'll set you down here. Go do my thing. So I'll make a triangle of tacks, right? One at the top, and then one sort of like right the bottom quarter, and one on that side as well. We do that with all of the tubes. And it should be held in place pretty darn good. Now for the chain stays and seat stays. Having a couple of issues here, look. The, that 3D printed part is kind of hitting on the jig there. That cable guide is, so I'm gonna have to do a bit of angle grinding, I reckon. The old chain stays are not going straight in like the rest of the tubes did. They're needing a bit of tweaking. So I've got it set up here in the tube block. Just taking a little bit off the top. Like that spot. Elbow up so you can see under my armpit. Here we go. Let's see if that's any better for us. Got them in now. Now fitting pretty darn good in there. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Let's see if we can get you set up so that you can watch. What are you saying? You wanna watch? Yeah, you do.
you can see what I mean right here. See that stays touching on this bar there, but it's not touching on this side. And then on the back of this heat tube there, you can see it's all mismatched. So you need to take a little bit off the bottom of this, I reckon. I'm on top of my mask there, nice and sturdy and, and neat. Use the vernier and scratch a line around the tube. And then that gives me something to aim for. And I get the old angle grinder out. Oh uh, yeah. All right. It is looking pretty good. Maybe took a fraction too much off. But it's all right. We will fill it with welds. It's the beauty of this sort of plug style. Now where that fits up inside to stay, you can leave it kind of sticking off a little bit like that and then it'll be okay. Not very focused is it? Silly GoPro, come on. Do I need a macro lens? Leave a comment, let me know. Right, frame has got heat sink in the seat tube, heat sink in the bottom bracket. Heat sink is kind of the wrong name for it, it's a shape keeper really, so that the bottom bracket doesn't lose its shape. And the seat tube, we don't want the welds to over penetrate into the seat tube and then make the reading a pain in the bum. So you're going to weld up the front end first, down through the seat tube to the bottom bracket, top tube and seat stays to the seat tube, top tube and down tube to the head tube and then we'll get the back purge on the go for the old chain stays and drop outs. Just going to get you set up there on that hammer. The weld that goes between there is my least favourite one to do on the whole bike frame. It's definitely the most difficult. So what I'm going to do is plunk you on the jig. See so you watch. Is that a good spot? Yeah. Okay, so I've gone round and got the tops and bottoms of all of the tubes all around the frame, or the front triangle at least. And the reason for that is I'm trying to keep the frame straight. I try and pin, pin the frame down by doing the tops and the bottoms you know, in line with the bike first of all, and then do the sides afterwards. And hopefully with the tops and bottoms pinned down, it's not going to pull too far out when we do the sides. 
that's where I'm off to now. Doing the sights. Where do you want to sit for this one? Over here behind me? Stuck that little bridge in there as well. But now it's time for the back purge. So I've got some of this heat proof tape. So I've got that heat proof tape stuck there in the bottom bracket um, to seal off the vent holes into the down tube and the seat tube. See a hole there going into the chainstay. So that's where the gas is gonna be going from the bottom bracket in, into the chainstay down towards the drop house. And we've got this, this heat sink that goes in there. This is a paraben machine works part. See that. And then the gas goes in there and then comes out of these slots and then can you know, travel around the bottom bracket into the chain stays. So here we are with the dual regulators. Split into the perch line. Perch line comes out of there. Ooh. Ooh into the bottom bracket. Flush. So, we turn that on. Open up this one. And then open that one. Till we get about five litres per minute flowing. You can hear it in there. So, to start with, we want the uh, frame vertical, because argon is heavier than air denser than air, so it'll fill up from the bottom and make its way up. So, because this one's just regular steel, I'll weld around that to start with while this one is filling up. That's it, it's done. Everything is welded. Dropouts, bridge, mainframe, bottom bracket. That looks seriously cool in there. With that printed chainstay and that funky shape to it. The welds all around there, that's pretty sweet. Doesn't look like I'm getting a good picture of this GoPro on the screen I've got on the back here, but hopefully once I get it on the computer it'll look a bit better. Because it looks amazing in real life. Now time for frame alignment. We chuck the frame onto this surface plate. It's had a hard life, but it's good enough for bike frames. Huh. So, bottom bracket goes in here, rear axle goes in there. And then we use these jobbies to check head tube and seat tube. can chuck one of these onto the edge of the head tube there see what it looks like looks pretty darn good a bit of a gap at the bottom there it's not very big and also as I close that gap at the bottom it's going to open the gap at the top so the amount of frames out of alignment is only half of that gap so that's pretty darn good so far checking the rear axle We've got this little space here on the rear axle and then I've got those two pins inside there so that'll tell me whether the 
axle is in alignment. So I've taken the rear axle now, out now. You can see it doesn't go in, you know, because that spacing is closed up. So what? Just keep doing that till the till the axle fits in. Go. So I like to have the rear axle defining the, the rest of the alignment, whereas a lot of other people do it from the bottom bracket. So that's solid now, and then we just check the rest of it. That's not too bad. Let me check. There's a little bit of a gap, but again, not too bad. Slightly better than it was. Yes, yeah, well within tolerance. You don't want to go too nuts with it. You can just end up chasing your tail. Then what you're looking for is for that facing tool to have made a cut all the way around that face. See you next time.